Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac Reber. This is a rare video where we're gonna have some administrative stuff to talk about right off the cut. So, a couple of videos ago I asked people if they would rather see me use an online randomizer to mitigate the chance of getting a lost, or if they would rather see me uh, continue to use the in-game randomizer with the chance of getting a lost. Did I say that right? Did I give you the two opportunities or the two alternatives? Online randomizer to remove the lost from the random pool, or in-game. I haven't decided fully yet, but I took a quick poll on Twitter, the results of which should be up on your screen now if I understand how OBS works. Boom! So, 70% of people roughly seem to want to use uh, an online randomizer. So I've got random.org hooked up here, which should be on your screen thusly. And I am going to random a number between 1 and 10. I got it set up here. 8 was just the first one that came up. I'm going to do it up here to keep it on the up and up. And this will be 7 this time, so I'm going to take that off the screen. And then we should be able to play Rebirth using the seventh character from Isaac. Let's play the game. Now, don't get too mad. This is not going to be necessarily the way that it's going to go moving forward. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, Samson. No problems there. Let's uh, let's start it up. Uh, but this may be the way that we continue to do it in the future. But I understand that there are probably better... Um, there's our seed, by the way. X2YFKY6P. Um, there are better character selectors. There's actually like dedicated mods and I think that there have been some uh, Chrome extensions that can uh, handle it. I just decided to use random.org because it's what I'm most familiar with today. So, you know, you've, you've seen it in action to some extent. It was a little bit cumbersome today, but let me know. Again, like I said a couple videos ago, I don't really care that much, but there is a growing, uh, or I shouldn't characterize it as growing because that might influence the results, but there seems to be a large contingent of people who are like, you know, your streak is like real now. It's it's not shit for once. Uh, it would be a shame to see you lose it against the loss, but there's also a contingent of people who have been, you know, operating under the assumption that that'll be a really fun video when inevitably the gods of random strike and I do random the lost. And um, I, I'm not partial to either camp, basically. I'm a slave to public opinion on this one. Um, it is nice that public opinion is perhaps making my life slightly easier, I will admit, but if, if people decide that this is shitty and you know, basically scumming the shit out of the streak, and, and that ends up being the, the common discourse, then sure. But I'm gonna make sure that we d set up some kind of poll to set it up uh, democratically, instead of just, you know, whoever shouts the loudest uh, gets their way. Well, this is a pretty good start here. Uh, we haven't seen our item room yet, so it's probably directly below us here, and I'm feeling relatively confident after that kind of terrible um, capitulation that happened last week, but... Uh, I mean, not last week. First off, yesterday. Secondly, we didn't end up losing, we just could have uh, won better, I guess. Uh, Rotten Baby as a first pickup here is awesome. I'm thinking about walking on... Uh, we'll, we'll see how this works after this boss goes down, which hopefully... I mean, I'm not trying to count my chickens yet, but this should give us a, a pretty easy finish here and an orbital, which is nice as well. But um, I may walk over the spikes to get some of those pills, or I may use the self-sacrifice room a little bit. We'll see. By the way, something that I hadn't considered, but people brought up on Twitter, is that using an online randomizer actually gives you the opportunity to random Eden. Which is nice. I mean, in a way, you're kind of replacing Eden... You know what, let's, let's try it once. You're kind of replacing the ability to random the Lost with the ability to random Eden instead. Which is good, but we could also have both. We could use an online randomizer and then have everything in it, you know? We, we wouldn't necessarily have to exclude the Lost, we could do it that way as well. Or we could exclude Eden, but anyway. I'm thinking that maybe when the streak actually ends, um, and I'm assuming that that'll probably happen within my lifetime, uh, we will do like one run of just hard mode Eden. It seems like, like Eden starts, they are the most dynamic at the start, you know? I, I appreciate that there's a call for variety, but Eden, so in a way at least, I think gives you that variety in a built-in kind of function, which is cool. Um, and it also seems to be something that the community really likes. You know, Cobalt has been doing hard mode Eden streaks. A lot of people, uh, I, I would argue maybe that he even popularized them, at least from from my understanding. Uh, and it seems like people really like that, and it's a, a decent measure of skill, and it's oh, it's also reasonably fun because you get a, a different run every single time. Basically, some of them super powerful, some of them not powerful at all. And I'm I gotta admit, I didn't want to bring it up just in case it gave us bad. Uh, why open that? I'm glad it worked, but why open that? Uh, in case it gave us bad luck or bad mojo or something, but um, Cobalt's incredible streak did end last night at, at 205 wins. And the parallels, look, I'll just admit, he's, he's a much better player and has had, had at the point of the streak's death a much, much larger streak. 
However, the parallels are crazy. His best streak, my best streak happening at the same time. His streak ended, possibly a little bit influenced by the fact that he was recently travel traveling and was uh, a little jet lagged. I'm a little jet lagged, was recently traveling. I'm slightly nervous that this is going to be like, you know, the, the week where all the streaks end. And I'm scared. I don't want it to happen to me. So we don't have a chance to get uh, an arcade on this floor, but I would love to get the IV bag if possible. We'll tackle that uh, as it comes up. So yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll start talking about the actual run in hand here, but please let me know how you feel about the uh, randomization. Don't get mad about it yet. One way or the other, I'm, uh, I'm just gonna do what I'm told, basically. We might actually want to completely fuck our donation machine and, and pick up uh, both of these. We'll need 22 cents. Which is probably going to take, like, another bomb after this one. Maybe even two. And this is, like, really unkind to our donation machine. But at the same time, Blank Card plus the Compass are two of the better items from the shop. Blank Card in particular, you know, Compass has a little bit more of a, a static effect, basically. This is looking like it could be a great run if we just happen to pick up one really, really good card. It doesn't even have to be that good, you know? A World Card would be amazing. A, um... A Hierophant card would obviously be pretty much GG, as would a Joker card probably. Chaos card is actually, I think, slightly overrated. We might as well. I just want to see if there's like money on this room. Because I, I hate to use the blank card two of diamonds to take me from one cent to two. I guess I could have donated one cent, but then I have to go back and donate one cent and I feel like a, an idiot. Um, this should allow us to get to 99 cents pretty quickly and in the meantime, also allow us to... Um, Illustrate the powerful effects of doubling and encourage you to invest early because the power of compound interest can really help you reach your retirement goals. All right. You guys know what I'm you you millennials know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna lose out on my deal with the devil chance if I get hit again here. Um, help me, help me. Okay, we should be fine now. You know, people are always talking up the haunt as the most difficult boss, and admittedly, that is what ended uh, Cobalt's run, and he only had one HP. It's not like that's <laughs> an easy boss fight with one HP. But Fistula, man, Fistula always gets me going. So we've already been to our item room, we've already been to our shop. Um, let's let's get out of here, and we'll start doubling our money, and as, assuming we get some keys here, we should be completely fine to have some good momentum. We took Brother Bobby, uh, in case you were curious, because... We want to deal with the Devil Precedent. So our, our damage has not really improved and we haven't really gotten the opportunity to take advantage of, uh, of Bloody Lust yet, but that can all come in time, you know. We'll, we'll try to... Actually, we should have an extremely good chance to, to summon an arcade by virtue of the fact that probably on every floor past this one we are going to have more than... Uh, let's see if there's some money in here first. That's gonna... That cuts one doubling off right here. Um, every floor, including this one, but also probably hereafter, we are going to have more than five cents and thus have a really good chance to spawn an arcade. Um, one blood bank shows up. I guess I don't really want to lose blank card, though, to pick up IV bag, but again, you know, it's it's a quality problem to have. I can lament the choice, but it's like having the choice between, like, you know, pizza and... I'm trying to think of what, what's another food that everybody likes. Pizza's like the universally beloved food. I know that the hamburgers may be a little overrated, but it's like having the choice between pizza and, and chicken fingers for dinner. No matter what, you're still getting something that tastes delicious. And don't try to spin me on the discourse that chicken fingers are a child's food. That is the the hamburger lobbyist, the, the beef industry of, of Montana. Poisoning your minds. There's nothing more inherently childish about eating chicken fingers than there is about eating anything else in the world. You telling me that breaded meats, you know, are consumed the world over by adults, politicians, people in positions of power, doctors, you know, the Illuminati, etc., etc. But as soon as you name them fingers, it's like, pff, you a kid or something? I'm not a kid, I'm a squid, man. I'm gonna just, don't laugh at that joke, because I haven't played Splatoon. I was pretty much just repeating and echoing something I've heard. Uh, so I don't deserve any credit for that joke, but uh, it, it's cool, cool beans. Uh, I, I've heard that Splatoon is great, I've got nothing against it, but in a way, like, this sounds kind of shitty. Let's double this. Uh, it sounds kind of shitty. Oh, I love you, Holy Mantle. However, I'm kind of like, there's a lot of good games. That's not to insult Splatoon in any way, it's rather just me being like, you know, just a game being good isn't enough anymore. We're living in like a, a golden age of of releases in 2015 so far. It's been a really, really great year, I think, especially after 2014 was 
Apart from a, a few games that I was a big fan of, um, Rebirth obviously chief amongst them, uh, I, I think 2014 was a little bit of a dry year. 2015 is, is feeling awesome so far, so... In a way, it's like, you know, it doesn't have to just be good, it also has to slice dice and make Julian fries at the same time. I can't believe that we got to deal with the devil here. Mmm, this is uh, very interesting now. One of the things that I'm... I'm just going to take Guppy's hairball, but then I'll continue with my discourse as we continue. Um, one of the things that uh, has come close to ending my runs along the streak is being a little bit too aggressive about uh, deals with the devil. So I didn't want to take both of those. I think that was just a little bit too risky. But I wanted to take Guppy's hairball, even though it's relatively useless right now, uh, because it's obviously a key ingredient of, of a lot of my wins. You know, if we can become Guppy. That was probably clear what I meant by that. We do have a key. I would like to... You know, we got 91 bombs. I should be using these as often as possible. I'm just trying to see if maybe we can find our secret room. I don't think... I think we would have found it, let's put it that way. Before we buy something though, let's um, make sure we get one more doubling. And actually, I'll probably buy for five cents the uh, the battery charge as well. And that'll give us 70 cents. So in one floor, basically, with a limited amount of money picked up, we'll have gone from one cent to 70. Uh, and plus whatever you know we get on, on this room right here. Once we get to 99, we could probably get rid of, of two of diamonds uh, and, and just coast on our financial security for the rest of the run. We might as well check this out as well down here. Um, and then and pick up like basically any other card that might be useful. Like I love that blank card two of diamonds basically is... You only have to use it for one full floor and then once you've got it uh, you know, taken care of, you got no worries, man. Here's a little song I wrote. Fiscal comfort is worthy of node. Every four rooms use the blank card. Every four rooms use the blank card, baby. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, let's just uh, not get sued by Bobby McFerrin. We're at 10 minutes, which means the boss rush is looking a little bit unlikely here, but that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Hopefully, we uh, have the opportunity to pick up. I mean, I really don't want the boomerang, obviously, but there we go. It's 76 cents. Uh, we might as well buy the other key. We might as well check out the pill. That's disappointing, but it, all things considered, not that bad. And you know what? We can actually uh, take advantage of this. Let's say no to boss rush for now, and this will be a run where I have the rare opportunity to really build up our donation machine if the game gives us a chance to do it. And you might be saying, oh, Northern Lion, be careful. Okay, well, it doesn't matter now. Be careful, don't go below 50 cents. But really, it wouldn't matter that much because we would get over 99 cents anyway. It only takes two doublings, so we don't really have a better card right now. I mean, I guess you could argue that we could have used the death card and had like a kind of a uh, Necronomicon type thing going on, but it's not that big of a deal. I really wanted that to be a second guppy item. Are you a wizard? Is not a huge problem. And luck up compensates for the luck down, so I'd say we're on our way here. We don't want the pony. Uh, was there something I could have gotten with that? I think that was the last floor where there were like those bombs and pills surrounded by stuff. So, uh, it's still a good position. We're in a little bit of a scary place uh, on HP. There is an arcade on this floor though. And finally we get the opportunity to get some uh, extra damage from Bloody Lust and possibly pick, a, pick up a, an IV bag. The question of whether or not we want to keep the IV bag is going to be a defining characteristic of the future of this run. But at the same time, we'd rather have the choice than not have the choice, right? Choice is usually, unless it psychs you out, a good thing here. So we still got a holy mantle. Let's check out our curse room. Guppy, no guppy. That's okay. Do we know these pills? I think we. One of them is a luck up, apparently. One of them is a tele pills where we're fighting the husk. Uh, it's actually not bad. That was a surprisingly well placed bomb, considering how far away the husk was at the time. That one too, I'm relatively proud of. Uh, we'll see if we get a deal with the devil here. It's unlikely, I'd say. Yo, something's not right. We're getting way too many of these. Yes! Um, we, we had Mom's Knife on the last run, but that's not going to stop me from taking Brimstone on this run. We have to take nine lives first, or we won't be able to take nine lives with us. So this is... Uh, I mean, Holy Mantle, Brimstone, nine lives. We're at a one run. The only question is whether or not we find a way to throw it. And I think it's probably pretty unlikely. So another Luck upgrade. Tears upgrade. Yeah, this is this is a really good setup. Uh, and to be honest with you, there was never really a moment on this run where we were uh, in a dangerous situation. Can't really do much with blank card right now. Uh, so I'm, I'm feeling really good about this, and it looks like we'll be looping back around to an Isaac run, I guess. 
I'm not going to use telepills yet because I don't want to leave two of diamonds behind. It's just kind of uh, something I shouldn't be that concerned about, I suppose. Yeah, this is this is a relief. So the Samson run should have basically no problems here. And we can just focus on getting a, a nice win, you know. Peace in our time. Peace in our time. Virgo is probably the second best thing that's going to happen on this room. Because I'm predicting a magic mushroom. Guaranteed. All right. Well, you know. That's why you never guarantee anything in this day and age. Society's going to hell in a handbasket. Word's not worth anything. Uh, help. The only thing that could really sour this run is... And I'm not trying to wish this on myself, but if I had some kind of catastrophic uh, cerebral edema or something along those lines, I, I'm pretty sure that that would put a real damper on things. If, for a number of different reasons, admittedly. Uh... But barring barring some catastrophe like that, we have Brimstone Holy Mantle nine lives. It's it's just too good. I guess it makes a lot of sense to play you. Where the heck was our our two of diamonds card was in the uh, in this room right here? So we might as well go back and pick this up. I mean, we could get telepills and take it out of here, but it doesn't matter all that much. Might as well pop this. And this guy's gonna pay out with something. And Mystery Sack, honestly, is a pretty good haul, I think. Um, unfortunately, we can't really do anything with Demon Judgment here, which means we also can't really do anything with uh, the Blood Bank, which is fine. We'll just move along. And we're a little bit slow for Boss Rush, which is disappointing, but uh, the later you get in the game, the harder it is to kind of come back from that... Uh, that time deficit. So I think I'm just gonna choose to ignore it now and focus on the fundamentals, have a good run, talk about bread integrity. Yo, I, I haven't talked as much as I would like to talk about the food from when I was in the UK. But I gotta say, not only have I gone on record as saying that, you know, you guys, if everybody watching this lives in the UK, which is probably a little bit of a ridiculous assumption now that I think about it, um, not only do you guys have the best breakfast in the world, in my opinion, you know, I'm just one judge. You know, Eurovision doesn't just go by one man's opinion. However, you guys have a lock on the ready-made sandwich game as well, and I mean that sincerely. At first I was like, why are all these sandwiches called fucking bacon buddies, chip buddies, sausage sarnies, you know, cheese toasties? It, it's, they're ridiculous names, but we can talk about that in the future, because the name is irrelevant. What's in a name? Would a rose by any other name not smell as sweet? And the, the bacon buddy as sold, uh, pre-packaged in many cafes, coffee shops, and uh, grocery store, convenience store type locations, is a premier sandwich of the world class. A little, nice little uh, floured Kaiser roll, a couple of slices of bacon, a little bit of brown sauce, delicious. Delicious. You go to a, a like a Starbucks, yeah, we'll take, the, we'll take it all, why not, right? Um, if you go to a Starbucks in, uh, America, Canada, uh, I guess those are the only countries I've ever been to them in, but anyway, um, they, they have like these weird artisan sandwiches that are mostly pretty bad. It's like, we got a focaccia Thai tuna flatbread. Yo, that's not, I can understand some people being into that, that's not what I want. What I want is UK style, three slices of bacon on a floured Kaiser roll, give me a packet of ketchup to see if I want it, give me a packet of HP sauce, I do want it. Also, the toasty may indeed be the best sandwich in the world. At least it's a candidate, and I've, I've eaten a lot of sandwiches in my day. I, I would have to give it more deliberation, uh, to be honest, before I felt 100% comfortable making that. But I think at least it has to be in the running, if you're not familiar with what a toasty is. At least the, the toasties I had were basically like a grilled cheese sandwich. But, and here's the kicker, the cheese was on the outside so that when the sandwich was produced, when it was heated, I guess I should say, uh, that's interesting. The cheese melted and created kind of like a... Well, I mean, it created cheese on the top of it, didn't it? So it was like a... It was a toasted sandwich, basically, with cheese on the outside. Almost like a little bit of a pizza top and a sandwich underneath. Imagine a cheese pizza, only the crust was made of a ham sandwich. It's fucking delicious. I've also seen toasties made as, like, those closed grilled cheese sandwich makers. Also fine. You guys have got it going on, man. Don't let... Don't let people insult your food over there. Because you... Might not have it 100% right, but you don't have it 100% wrong either. And, you know, there's there's food in Canada and the U.S. that is just ridiculous as well. At least do not, you know, uh, abide by people making fun of your food if they're also going to have, you know, you got to ask them the question, have you ever in your life consumed one KFC Double Dan sandwich? 
And if they say yes, then their opinion is uh, immediately moot. Alright, so we picked up the pentagram from our deal with the devil here. I mean, this run just keeps getting better and better. There's not really much that I can say about this to, to ramp up the tension. It's theoretically conceivable that if you ran the simulation of this run, like, probably like 200 times, you could find a run that has a loss. Um, all other things being equal, I don't expect that it's very likely that we end up encountering this here. We have Holy Mantle, Brimstone, really good damage, 9 lives, and we're only one item away from becoming Guppy. And speaking of which, we have free access to every deal with the devil for the rest of the game. Uh, we also have 99 cents. Admittedly, it's starting to diminish somewhat, but uh, it, it's not going to be conceivable for us to basically fall below... Um, the, the range at which we can actually, like, buy stuff for the rest of the run, no question. Uh, Magician card would be interesting with Brimstone, but is not particularly useful one way or the other. Com as compared to the, the Joker card, at least. Now, I'm getting a little cocky here, I'll admit. I in, in those 200 simulations, the one that would actually be a loss would probably be because of either just terrible dodging or getting a little bit hubristical Macbethian, if you will. And, uh... Just taking damage that I should not be taking. So we're going to focus on the fundamentals here. We probably don't need the fundamentals to succeed, but if we have the opportunity to use the fundamentals and do better, why wouldn't we? Two of clubs. Uh, easy, and then we'll get one more. Actually, there's no reason not to just carry the two of clubs with us here. We can probably get back to... I'll, I'll take the like uh, liberal estimate here and assume that we can maybe actually have a pretty good chance to get back to 99 bombs. Which would put us, uh, like, in a fantastic position with respect to basically every consumable in the game. Minus spirit hearts right now, I guess. Uh, let's pop it. And get up to 44 here. What's this one? High Priestess. It's, it's good, but it's not that good. And similarly, I'm not really that interested in the, uh... In the Hanged Man, once every four rooms being able to fly. I'd, I'd rather keep our Joker card with us. I mean, I don't even think that's a contest. Our Joker card is going to be kept with us. Hoping for maybe something a little bit better out of these uh, in the future, if we could swing that. The golden chess, I mean. I'm not trying to act like I'm in a bad position, but it would be really nice, you know, to get uh, some Cricket's Head action. But I guess you can't always get what you want. But that's bullshit, man! Steven Tyler of Aerosmith did not know what he was talking about when he covered Justin Bieber's smash hit magnum opus, You Can't Always Get What You Want, at Abbey Road Studios in Liverpool. What uh, sometimes happens in Isaac is you get exactly what you want at every available opportunity. We've had that happen with surprising regularity. Maybe it'll happen again here. Hmm, that was not quite what I asked for, but probably what I deserved. Loki's Horns is bad, but at least interesting with, uh, with Brimstone. I don't think we're actually going to hit uh, 99 bombs, but we're going to hit like... 96. Well, okay, never mind. We're gonna hit 99. So that's exciting news, I guess. Uh, all consumables have worked out fantastically for us. Thank you very much to uh, Bombs Are Key for making that happen. And this, I, I actually would welcome... This is me spinning this into somehow being a bad thing, which is just ridiculous, because this run is amazing right now. But bear with me. Humor me a little bit. I'm, I almost hate this being my first run of the day. Because... It puts me in a false sense of security where I'm like, I am amazing at Isaac, right? I can't lose. This run, it doesn't build up the tension muscles. So as a result, uh, I find it difficult to maintain an awareness erection. Which is to say that I can't, you know, see my... When I get into the next run, I'm going to be like, well, I can never lose on this, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, maybe I actually will lose. Sorry, I punched my microphone a little bit there. Uh, so... It's a little dangerous, but that's the most dangerous thing about this run. This run, in and of itself right now, is basically impossible to fudge up. Now, we could have teleported out of Boss Rush with our, uh, with our tools here, but uh, obviously that train has long sailed. I will teleport out of the Boss Trap Room, because why not, basically? We can open all the stuff for free and not have to fight any of the enemies who are not going to be difficult, but just, you know, maybe a little annoying. I left that bomb on the ground, which is not very smart. Alright, uh, this is the worst possible, like, permutation of a Krampus fight, because basically, whatever we get, we don't care about. Lump of Coal doesn't help us out at, at all, unless we somehow, like, get rid of our Brimstone effect for some kind of other effect, which I don't even think is possible. So, uh, 
It was either that or Krampus's head. Krampus's head, we cannot reroll, so it would have to replace blank card, which is definitely not going to happen. PhD would have been a good addition on this run. Well, it could, still could be a good addition on this run. And obviously, the number one thing, not that it's a prerequisite for our success at this point, but the number one thing on this run would be for us to pick up uh, one more guppy item. So I'm going to be going to the curse rooms. Obviously, I'm going to be going to the deals of the devil. That one, a little bit disappointing, I guess. Uh, well, that's fine. We got a guppy item in there. No, what? I was so ready. I was like, finally we became guppy. Did you hear the tone of voice that I had? It wasn't even like, yeah, we're guppy. It was like, oh, ho-hum, guppy again. That's how uh, commonplace or how, how, like, blasé I expected it to be. Bogo bombs. Not, not particularly amazing right now, but there's nothing wrong with it. Thank you, at least, for not using Curse of the Blind and giving me something awful. I appreciate that. Um, you're a saint. You're a sinner. You're a saint. You do not feel ashamed. You're my hell. You're my dreams. You're nothing in between. You know, I wouldn't want it any other way. How do I still remember all the words to the late 90s girl power classic bitch by Meredith Evans? Is that... She's a bitch. She's a lover. Okay, I mean, it's been known to happen. I'm a child, I'm a mother. That's not really that much to brag about, honestly. Like, oh, there we go, we're gonna be. Like, you shouldn't... I'm not saying you should be ashamed of the fact that you're a child or a mother, but at the same time, you know, that, that doesn't really mean all that much. Everybody is a child of somebody. The mother thing is the only thing that's even debatable, you know? It's even not... Like, you, you could not be a mother, admittedly. I'm a sinner, I'm a saint. I do not feel ashamed. Honestly, I think that's a little bit of a warning sign, a lack of remorse. Everybody has things in their life that, ugh. Well, I mean, we already got Guppy, so it doesn't matter too much. Everybody has things in their life that they uh, they feel some guilt or remorse over. And to not allow yourself to feel that natural feeling is honestly, I think, a, a bit of a troubling sign of, uh, like, a complete lack of self-awareness. So, I, I don't think she should be touting that, you know? Whenever people are like, oh, I have no regrets. It's like, you should... Yeah, you're just afraid to face your regrets, man. You can have healthy regrets. Of course, it helps you grow as a person. Um, I'm your hell, I'm your dream, okay, I'm nothing in between. To be honest with you, this is starting to sound like you might have the, the, uh, you know, DSM-4 textbook definition of, like, uh, borderline personality disorder or, or bipolar bipolarness, I don't know. I'm not trying to diagnose you by this song, but, you know, I, it, it, did we, um, in our, our championing of the, of this song, did we perhaps... Make it so Meredith Evans did not feel, if that is even her name, feel like she needed to get the help that maybe she could have used to live a more healthy lifestyle. So take me as I am. This might mean that you have to be a stronger man. Okay, I mean, that's not that unreasonable. Right about the time I start to make you nervous because I'm going to extremes, I'm cracking the case right now. Tomorrow I will change, but today don't mean a thing. That's a remarkable lack of inhibitions. Also symptomatic of, of perhaps some kind of uh, mental instability. I'm not trying to shame her for it. I'm just saying that maybe we missed all the warning signs. I gotta look into what Miss Evans is up to uh, to this day and age. Would it be, in a way, somewhat disappointing if she was, like, a, a soccer mom? I'm not gonna say that there's anything wrong with that. She's like, I'm a bitch, I'm a lover, I'm a child, pack your lunch bag, we have got practice in ten. Yell at your coach and then, I'm your mom, listen to me, because that's what I said, you know. Anyway, basically what I'm getting at is she's a hypocrite who also maybe needs to seek counseling. Okay, is this, uh, this is womb one, so we're not really concerned about a, a D with a D, the bang the bang dicky on this floor. You know what, with the Joker card, I'll admit, this this is a run where I should have gone to the dark room because we could have Joker carded into Womb 2's Deal with the Devil, gone down to Shoal, and then saved ourselves a floor, and it would have been kind of funny to do so, but that that train has sailed. That's one I will give you in the dark room camp. You know, if you're if you're one of those people who's been Northern Lion, please go to the dark room. You are 100% correct that I should have done it on this one. That could have been fun. Well, you know, this doesn't really gain us anything, but we'll <laughs> just not have to fight the enemies, and so it gave us time, which is perhaps the most valuable resource of all, if you ask me. I mean, you gotta think about some of those songs in, in hindsight that, that we sang around 
around the school yards and the campfires of the of the day. I, I still there's something in Eiffel 65's Magnum Hit Opus uh, blue that makes no sense to me. There's some symbolism I think. Is it just about a guy who's sad? I mean, obviously their their sophomore minor hit "Move Your Body" is pretty simple. Move your body, move your mind, move your move. Like it's just a dance song. But blue's got something. How about "Sex and Candy" by Marcy Playground? There's some troubling, you know, conclusions you can draw from that. First off, what kind of candy has a smell? I'm not trying to say that candy does not have a taste, and smell is, of course, uh, tied to taste. But I would, you know, it's it's not a very strong smelling food category in general. Sex, you know, it, it does, it's aromatic at times, uh, admittedly. Who's, I smell sex in candy, yeah. Who's been lounging in my chair? Is that really lounging? Just chowing down on some candy and, and getting it on? I mean, I guess if you, if, by definition, if you are having coitus, I did not know that those hearts would be the next wave there. If you are having coitus and eating like some Swedish berries, and also having some candy on the side, <laughs> I guess it would have to be leisurely, right? It's not like you can be super serious and be like, pass me the fuzzy peaches. Anyway. Who's been casting devious stares in my direction? Ma but that song is actually, that it knows what's going on. Mama, this surely was a dream. Yeah, like you you were asleep. Shut up about it. I don't remember any other songs. Except the new Radicals 1999 classic, You Get What You Give, which never got the airplay that it deserved, and yet somehow still drove the lead singer into exile despite the fact that it was an expertly crafted pop song. The kind we could have used during the dark days of the early 2000s. Anyway. Let's go fight Isaac and, and beat the game, shall we? We got Horror Babylon. It's like, what is there to talk about? Northern Lion, talk about the run. Thank you, straw man, that I made up to emphasize my point. There's nothing to talk about on this run. We're going to win. Nobody's going to remember run 56, but it was a necessary, you know, stop on the road uh, to hopefully whatever our streak ends at being high. Um, she's so high. High above me. She's so lovely. I got to think of... That's Tal Bachman's She's So High. Is it? I'm trying to, there's, there's something in those lyrics there. She's fast and fancy free. She's high society. Is this song about a cat? I don't understand. Oh, yeah. We'll fight Mega Satan on this run for sure. Uh, we'll take Sacrificial Dagger. We might as well check out the deal with the devil and see what's... Yeah, yeah, man. Absolutely, we'll take... Uh, Book of Belial to help us out in this whole dad's key extravaganza here. I'm not going to take experimental treatment because it's going to make my life a little bit harder. In case we get some extra HP out of it, which we wouldn't want. So we'll just finish off the run here. Um, there's just, you know, your average 30 minute Mega Satan run. Pretty solid. No, no complaints really to offer, I think. I'm very happy with the way that it worked out. And again, uh, in case you've forgotten from the early part of this episode, please let me know how you feel about using a character randomizer. There's a few different possible permutations of it, you know. Use an online randomizer that makes it impossible to get the lost. Use an online randomizer that makes it possible to get Eden, but impossible to get the lost. Use an online randomizer that makes it possible to get both. Or just continue using the in-game randomizer, at least until this streak ends and we can discuss it more further in depth at that point. I'm interested to hear. I'm happy with this run, though. Um, a, a decided lack of tension, but apart from that... Uh, Pretty much everything that could have possibly gone our way has gone our way. And you know what? Fuck morale. I needed kind of a big win after almost losing that last run with Mom's Knife, which would have made me just the saddest Isaac player of all time. Surprisingly close call. Now, if we were really cheeky, what we could do is Joker card out of this and get ready to fight Mega Satan again. But honestly, I, I don't even think there's any tension inherent in that. Like, we are just going to destroy him so easily that... We lost to one spirit art that whole time. Anyway, that's Mega Satan done. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.